Okay. All right, good afternoon, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started here. I know there's a couple of people are still out in the, uh, in the atrium. Give them a second to come in. So again, uh, I would like to thank everyone for coming. My name is Michael Owens. I'm the mayor of Mableton, Georgia. And uh, thank you all for coming out. Today was uh, a very important day. It's a meeting that we had, as I called, specifically to be able to talk about public safety issues that re relate to uh, the Six Flags area, uh, part of Mableton, Georgia, and the southern part of Cobb County. As, as you all know, there was an incident that occurred back on March 2nd um, where uh, the opening day of Six Flags where there was an incident that occurred with, uh, uh, led to a young man, a young man getting shot, uh, but also an overaccumbance of uh, hundreds of kids, teenagers within the park, uh, leading to other issues in, that we had during that day and that evening. But this meeting today is really about coming together with business leadership, with the city of Mableton, with uh, the county, and resources to talk about challenges that we have, to face them head on, and to talk about what we're going to do going forward. As I mentioned before, it's paramount that we have safety within our area, that we look to make sure that this co combination of everyone is about making sure that our children, our families, our employees, our visitors, and our residents are safe in the city. That's something that we've talked about before, but I wanted to make sure that we call this meeting specifically to be able to have a round table to talk about these issues. Uh, as you can see, there's several members here today that represent some of the people we have within our meeting, but I do want to assure everyone that we have an overwhelming uh, outcome of people to show up because they really care about the city, about the community, and about the public safety. Some of those were our 911 uh, responders. We had members from our emergency management um, agency that was here. Our fire chief, Bill Johnson, was here. Um, our, our, again, Cobb County 911. We also had several significant members of the community itself. As you see right now, we are in the epicenter, the Riverside epicenter, um, who has prominent membership uh, or in this area to make sure that uh, they're members of the community. We also have uh, members of Six Flags, Greg Fuller, uh, who will be the new president of Six Flags, who is also, was also a part of the meeting today, the sheriff's office, and a host of others. I'm delighted that our state representative was here uh, to be part of these conversations today. I'm going to make this really simple. What we intend to do is ensure the safety of our community, not only because of this one incident, but ensure that we're looking forward as we, as a new city, grow uh, in influence, as we grow in ensuring that uh, we have a city that everyone can be proud of and feel safe in. We want to take this momentous approach to move forward. And so um, I don't want to take up much any more time. I want to, do want to make sure we leave opportunities for questions. But as I said before, this, the solution of this is a collaborative event. It's going to be a collaboration moving forward of, of all the different entities that we have in this county and this city. Uh, and with that said, I'd like to turn it over to our county commissioner for this district, Ms. Monique Sheffield. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you all for attending today. To echo some of the points that the mayor made, it was a very, very productive meeting. As we know, there's always challenges at Six Flags, particularly on two weekends, and that's the opening weekend and also Fright Night. For the last several years, when I assumed office in 2021, the numbers have been going down dramatically. Uh, our public safety, which is standing right behind me and we'll probably hear from them, we meet uh, very regularly to discuss challenges and issues, not just at Six, Six Flags Park, but some of the challenge from the park that floods into the apartment community along Riverside Parkway. There are a lot of recommendations made today. We are very encouraged about the partnership that we have here today. Thank you, Mayor, for calling all of us together to have this very important meeting. As he mentioned, the overall goal is the safety of the community. Six Flags is a park and a recreation area where families want to feel safe. And it's our job as Cobb County leadership to ensure that families are safe when they visit our park. Um, there are a lot of good recommendations, again, that were made in the meeting, none at which I am at liberty to share at this point because we're still collaborating. But the city has the county's full support. 
as you can see in back of me, also the resources. We will continue to work together as a partner to ensure the safety of our community. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to have our yeah. I'd, I'd like to have our uh, public safety director, Mike Register, come up. Thanks, Mayor. And I uh, also will echo, I really appreciate you uh, getting the meeting together because, you know, you've heard the word several times today, partnership, partnership. And it truly is what it takes in order to address issues like we've seen a couple of weeks ago, the mayor has spoken up. But it's an ongoing partnership. It's a holistic partnership. And it's not just a law enforcement uh, thing. It's not just a community thing, but it's a partnership where we were talking about specifically this area in Six Flags today, and we had representatives from Six Flags there. And, you know, we're very enthused to have uh, the partnership um, that Six Flags is bringing to the table to help us from public safety address some of the issues. And I think uh, you're going to hear from the sheriff and from, from the chief of police uh, in a few moments. And I just want to say thank you to all the public safety partners, the city of Mapleton, and uh, all the representatives from the community here. Because as you know, we can't do it alone. We have to do it together. So thank you. And I think Sheriff Owens is next. Good afternoon, everyone. Sheriff Owens. Uh, as everyone kind of stated that this was a great meeting about partnership and collaboration for the future and really about keeping the city of Mapleton and South Cobb safe. We all have the same goal, same mindset, is provide protection to our citizens. And today I think they're just the first step in ensuring that we're doing that collectively. And so I want to make sure that you understand that the Sheriff's Office is sure that we'll be uh, partnering with the Police Department and any other agency that's down here that need any assistance going forward to ensure that the park itself is safe as well as South Cobb and the city of Mapleton going forward. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Stuart Van Hooser. I'm the police chief of Cobb County, and I thank you all for coming and helping us in actually communicating with our community about the challenges that we have and some victories that we've had as well. I'd like to really start with a little bit of history and just say that we are not incident driven. We are not reactive. We are very, very proactive. We are ahead of these issues before they occur. That doesn't stop them from occurring. So sometimes it looks a little retrospective, but we do some very creative things in various regions of our county that we find to be very integral to the success of the county, and this is one of them. And we have used a host of different methods of keeping people safe. We use data, we use technology, but I think the very biggest one that we use is community policing. And what that means is partnering with our community to actually keep people safer. It's more than just pictures on Facebook. It's more than cookies with the cop. It's actually making people safer together with our community. We have a long track record of doing that in various areas of our county. Uh, I want to commend both the employees of the Cobb County Police Department, the men and women that were out here last Saturday night when all this happened, because it's a very, very, very dangerous situation to be in with that number of people and with multiple armed individuals. And I want to commend them and thank them as I normally do in situations where we're called together on an occasion like this, like we did a few weeks ago when we had another incident in Cobb County. But the men and women that protect us, we have to protect as well. And so as we're looking forward, the many things that we talked about today with not only with Six Flags, but with fire, with 911, with EMA, with the various aspects of public safety with the sheriff, all those things are designed to make our community safer. Our community includes our police officers. And so I'm very honored to be a small part of that. I will commend Major Hurst, Matt Hurst, who I think is still in here, who is the commander currently, he is. He's the commander currently of Precinct 2, which is the precinct that covers this area. I was a former commander here, so was the sheriff. And we really stress more than anything that cooperative efforts with our community, which we are now displaying, is the key to a safer community. And so we're excited to partner 
and we're at the service of not only Six Flags, but also the community members who reside and visit in this area to make sure that those, uh, everything that we can do is done. So thank you for your time, and I guess I'll turn it back over to the mayor. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, Representative Cummings. Good afternoon. We talk a lot down at the state legislature about Georgia being a place for business, the best place for business. Well, Six Flags is a big part of that. Six Flags is the largest employer of young people in the state. So um, the viability and the success of Six Flags has always been important, not only to the new city of Mableton, but to Cobb County and yes, the state. My presence here was to um, relay that. I also live in Mableton. And so I have a keen entrance um, in making sure that we're successful and Six Flags is a key part of that. There were no less, I can say, there were no less than 25 people that attended the meeting today. And I think that's a testament to how many people in the community in Cobb County really, really care. That incident um, was unfortunate. Um, things are taking place to try to make sure that it does not happen again. And as most of you know, the um, kids that were involved in that were not from this area. They were not from Ableton. So again, um, that's why I was here and um, I'm very happy to hear what, what's going on today and what's coming um, in the future. And I want to um, welcome Greg back to Six Flags and to the Mableton area. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. So if, if you've heard from several of our uh, esteemed leaders um, from at our state level, county level, uh, our sheriff and our public safety officers, uh, we are fully committed. We took time today to recommit ourselves to the future of having enhanced safety apparatuses uh, and a goal of making sure everyone is safe in the city. Six Flags is uh, a very important part of our city, very important part of our community. Uh, so is the epicenter. But there's also a lot of residents that live in this area that's reached out to me over the last week or so uh, to express their concern, but also their optimism. Because one of the things that we look forward to as a city is how we can grow this part of the city into a, a, a vivacious, uh, ever living part that people can come to, can, whether they go to Six Flags or not. This epicenter right here, this building that we're in, is a fantastic facility that has a bowling alley, a, a auditorium, uh, always hosting different events for the community. There's a, every year there is a trunk and treat uh, operation that brings out hundreds, if not thousands, of kids to this area. There's lots of apartments and, and residential uh, communities that dot this area that we want to make sure we attend to them as well. So, Again, this is not the first meeting that we're, I mean, this is not the last meeting we're going to have. And in truth, it's not the first meeting that we've had. But it was important to, to let everyone know that we're having this meeting. We'll continue to have meetings going forward because we understand this is, there's not a silver bullet. There's not a single solution to this. But together, collaboratively, we can impact change and we can make the Six Flags area, make Mableton and Cobb County uh, a very hospitable, loving place that everyone wants to continue to visit. Uh, play, work, and thrive in. So with that being said, I would like to open the floor for any questions that may be out there. Absolutely. I, you know, so from an overview of the meeting, it was really about several different parts of that meeting. One was, was obviously talking about what brought us to this moment, what led up to the incident at Six Flags, but also taking a further uh, retrospective look. The police chief was able to talk about uh, issues and incidents that's occurred over the last several years and, and also things that we've done as a, as a community and as a law enforcement and business owners in the area to prepare for opening day, which, which the incident occurred on. Um, so there was a, a talk about current status, current assessment of what's been done, what led us to this point. Uh, there was also discussions about lessons learned. You know, we want to make sure we look at this holistically um, and do whatever analysis that, that the law enforcement have done to understand what lessons are we taking away, not just from the police department, 
but also uh, from our business owners in the area, how they've been able to work with uh, on-duty and off-duty officers uh, to increase presence. We then took a look at uh, what are those things we're going to do as far as pathway forwards. What are those ideas? What are those solutions? That's the reason why we had uh, so many people at that meeting. I, I actually think the representative said 25, or I dare say it was closer to 50 people um, from, from all different areas that were able to come together and put their ideas on the table. So today was, was about discussion about how we got here, but much more of the discussion was about what do we do going forward. We also looked at, at the, the situation that kind of led up this, the um, impact that it's having, but also the fact that I think the representative mentioned that, uh, and the police have corroborated the fact that many of those uh, people that was involved in the incidents were not from Mableton. I mean, as a matter of fact, many of them were not from Cobb County at all. So we have to kind of widen our aperture when we're looking for solutions about things that we could potentially do by having a better understanding of the event itself, but also uh, issues that's been happening. And I talked about some of the adjacent impact that's having the spillage, if you will, over to our residential areas, to other businesses that exist uh, in the area, so we can ensure that we're not being uh, myopic when we look for uh, not only problems, but when we look for solutions. And lastly, we talked about pathways forward. And we talked about the opportunities of uh, what some of those security measures should be put in place. We've talked about um, distinct or, or specific issues uh, that we have remedies and solutions for. And look, some of these are going to be tried and true methods that we know um, exist, but there are also going to be things that are innovative. New things that, that I'm sure that the, the chief and others will talk about um, using new technology that we want to bring to the forefront that have been used in other areas that we can bring uh, into this area to help make sure it's more secure for everyone. Uh, we talked about what we can do to ensure that as we go forward, we continue to have a, a, an image and a perception of this area that's not tainted by a single event. You know, my, uh, my family comes to Six Flags a lot. My children come. My mother loves to come to Six Flags and, and she will continue to. She just renewed her membership and will continue to come. Uh, I continue to plan on going every chance I get. I think the uh, opening of the new roller coaster just a couple of months ago uh, that, that myself, Holly Quinlan from Cobb Tourism attended, and, and we had a fantastic time. So, you know, we're not going to be defined by one or two incidents that, that's an unfortunate instance that occurred. And I think this was kind of the, the discussion throughout uh, the time that we had over another room about how we were going to go forward past this. So we did talk, again, about the history and what led up to this, but a lot of discussions were about pathways forward and things that we can do to be all encompassing. Larry. Well, I think, you know, in Cobb County, we have a lot of experience dealing with uh, high occupancy events like the Battery, uh, the Braves. And in situations like this, we have protocols in place where we respond. Of course, every incident is different, but having that unified and that cohesive and collaborative response is, is really what saves lives, what keeps the community safe. And with each incident, we go back and we do an after action report on that incident to see what we did good and what we could do better. And this incident is no different from that. Uh, you know, prior to opening day at Six Flags, public safety had many meetings uh, with each other uh, and with our partners uh, in this area to include Six Flags, uh, trying to prepare. <clears throat> and there was several things that we did differently this year that we didn't do in the past. But those things are driven sometimes by newer technology and, and uh, ways to handle various situations. But after the incident occurred, we, uh, the week right after the incident, I know public safety had um, at least five to six meetings pertaining to that night. So we could critique that night and, and prepare for the next weekend, which was this past Saturday and Sunday, and, and we had a, a great turnout, no issues. 
So it is always a work in progress. We can't have contingencies for everything, but what we can do is have response protocols that we can adjust as the situation dictates. So I, I think first and foremost is about, it is about bringing everyone to the table, right? And, and acknowledging issues that exist and bringing the right people to the table, I think. Um, we also identified uh, potential areas and gaps that, that existed. Um, you know, it was, it was mentioned that this incident uh, didn't occur on Six Flags property, but you know, we talked about this, uh, the service road. And there is a couple of parking lots, for instance, um, that um, were identified and we want to make sure that any security uh, elements that we put on the table is included there as well. You know, because part of the challenge that we have here is when you're talking about the number of, of uh, patrons, teenagers that leave this facility is where are they going to go to? So some of the specifics that was discussed was really around crowd control, which was just brought up, um, around things that, that tried and true visibility, I think lighting, um, you know, signage, things that just raise the awareness. Um, but there's also things that, that we talked about uh, that I think specifically everyone has, has probably kind of touched on uh, is around ensuring that the, around the health and safety of teenagers. These are for a large part teenagers we're talking about. So where are they going? When are they getting picked up? How are they getting dropped off? Uh, things of that nature was discussed as well. But you know, I'm gonna reserve a lot of the specifics um, for when there's actually an action plan things that we, we can bring to the table. What I can say is that um, uh, Greg Fulner, uh, the president, at, or I think he's gonna be the incoming president, former general manager of Six Flags, uh, was in attendance and was very supportive of ideas um, and, and talked about uh, measures that they've already taken, again, based off lessons learned from, from last year opening day. And even since, um, since I think Mr. Fulner has, has to return back to Six Flags. So there are some very specific things that we will continue to put in place. Again, I'll, I'll say again, there's no silver bullet to this. So it's not like, oh yeah, we do these three things and every one thing is gonna be great. Uh, I do have to mention collaborative approach because that is one of the single most important things that we're going to do. You know, we're gonna have the right people at the table, we're gonna have this recommitted approach uh, to community and public safety. And, and that is the most salient point that I wanna make sure is, is brought to everyone's attention. I think um, there will, I think the um, director mentioned the after actions report uh, that takes place. There's other, there's things today that was brought to the table that I don't know have been brought up before, at least not collectively. So we're gonna need some time to kind of synthesize those activities, um, talk to other business leaders in the area. From a city perspective, um, there's things that we're gonna have to continue to look at um, as it relates to things that we could put in place. So there's no specific timeline of this because there's, there's, there's not a uh, specific deadline, right? This is something that didn't start yesterday or two weeks ago, and it's not gonna be solved tomorrow. So we're gonna take, again, I, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but we're gonna take a collaborative approach to this uh, and look at what all of those elements are. We don't, also, we don't wanna shortchange ourselves, right? We wanna make sure that every possible solution is brought to the table. Um, we also want to make sure that it's within the right scope and scale. You know, we don't want to go around, you know, hitting penny nails with sledgehammers either. We want to make sure we're putting in the right approach uh, for the right issues that we're having. I can tell you that's definitely something that was discussed. Um, and we, quite frankly, we've had that discussion about inside the park and outside the park. You know, I mentioned before that, you know, we, we've talked about what other parks may be doing. I've, I've mentioned that I spoke to mayors across the country, uh, many of them who have parks in their cities and how they've handled uh, similar type situations. 
uh, with unaccompanied minors and, and lots of different uh, activities happen in and outside the park. But this is, I, I want to be clear about this too, this is not simply a Six Flags issue, right? This is not solely a Six Flags problem to solve, which is why you see all of us here and why there were so many people at the meeting today. But I can tell you that Six Flags is uh, on board and, and they were receptive to many of the things that were suggested by the police chief and others uh, as to uh, how to make changes going forward. Sheila. Yeah, well, well thank, thank you for that. And I have made uh, discussions and comments about uh, a Six Flags Entertainment District or making this area uh, more amenable uh, to not only people that, that come to Six Flags, but also making sure that people don't just go to the park and leave. You know, make sure that people take an opportunity to visit the epicenter um, and that we bring in other retail and, and restaurants and shops to truly transform this area. Look, Six Flags is one of the major destination vacation locations in the Southeast. Um, and so as a city, we obviously want to take advantage of that. We also want to make sure that um, it's not just Six Flags, that, that this area truly becomes, I think, everything that it has the potential to be. You know, in, in the city of Mableton, uh, we do lack for hotels and other restaurants that we, we want to see as part of the growth of our new city. And uh, as a resident, I'm sure you can appreciate that. We've heard it from many other residents. So we are keen on being able to do that. We are just uh, in the midst of launching our Mableton 2045 project, which will be the long-term city comprehensive plan. And I can tell you as part of that comprehensive plan, the, the Six Flags area was is specifically named uh, the Six Flags Entertainment District as one of those special focus areas, as well as the Riverside uh, Corridor, where we have a host of, of uh, residential areas and apartments that we know that needs uplift uh, and some special attention to as well. So yes, there is no doubt that, that economic viability uh, that the city has and to the county as a large part is tied to Six Flags. Um, and we also know there's a tremendous opportunity we have here in the epicenter to have more visitors, more opportunities. Um, and, and that's something that we're gonna focus on. I'm not gonna be deterred, as I mentioned before, by a single incident uh, defining what this area is and what this area means. As, as mayor and now having a local municipality and having a partnership you heard with the county and others, uh, we have a fantastic opportunity to redefine, to reshape this area, um, to make sure it's uh, a great destination place for people, not only in, in Mableton or the metro area, but across the entire country. Uh, you know, I, I've been visiting Six Flags since I was a kid, and I wanna make sure that my kids and their kids have that same exact opportunity. And, and we can do that in an expanded, more, uh, more vibrant way by ensuring that we have hotels and restaurants and um, you know, being EV friendly and other things that we can do to truly make this a great destination place. Thank you. Yes, Annie. I don't know that, I know that we're not, we weren't prepared to speak to the investigation of the, of the uh, at all. Right, so that's a GBI issue that, that we're allowing the GBI to handle. Yes, Monica. Uh, do you want to be a little more specific? About the fact that you have property owners in the city of Mexican who are posting about $110 million in assets and they refuse to fix broken windows. Broken windows, our children are going to school. They're passing by these schools that are just infested with sewage and these apartment complex owners are refusing to fix their property. And also when we ask the question about Code enforcement, code enforcement is going back to the county. The county said, 
Thank you for that. I, I think when you mentioned four months out of year, I think you're talking about when Six Flags is open. Yes, because I, I think they're actually open quite a bit more than, than four months out of the year. Um, but I, I open this by saying that our most paramount issue is in the safety and security of everyone within the city of Mableton, and, and along with that is our visitors and our employees as well, and we will continue to do so with that. As it relates to code enforcement issues and, and other things of that nature, we are still working in conjunction with the county uh, as, as we work to take over more services. We have not taken over code enforcement yet as a city, um, but I think the larger aspect is how do we continue to ensure that we are doing the best thing for all residents in the city. I've committed to doing that and I will continue to commit to do that. As we look at issues, and I think as we look at issues specifically related to uh, the, the apartments, some of the other areas uh, adjacent to, the, to the, the Six Flags area, I just made reference to the fact that Mableton 2045 is part of that plan to address that. Not only part of the plan, it's actually one of the specific special focus areas that we've called out in the qualifications for the Mableton 2045. So um, as part of what we're doing, we're looking at all areas across the city. This press conference this issue today, obviously, is specifically towards, uh, geared towards uh, the Six Flags issue itself. But yes, I did make reference to the adjacent area to this, which is right on Riverside Drive, because we understand that how important this is for everyone in the city. So thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Yashika. So um, I, I may let the chief speak to a little of that, but I do want to say that, um, again, this was not the first meeting that, that we've had. It's, it's by far the largest meeting uh, and one that, that I did kind of put a call out to say we definitively have to, have to do something. Uh, but it wasn't the first meeting. There was meetings leading up to this. There was a look back at what had happened previous opening nights and previous um, fright nights. So. Um, yeah, I, I think I'll let the, the chief speak to Liz, but I did want to make sure I mentioned that this was not the first meeting. There were meetings leading up to it. And, uh, and to my earlier point that Six Flags is very amenable, right, to, to suggestions. And, and, and Mr. Fuller had also spoke to the fact that there were some things that he has already put in place or that has been put in place since last year that they also felt was, was had some mitigating qualities uh, on opening day as well. That things that you may not have seen, um, because obviously only certain things hit the, the news wire, but there were things that were actually addressed and mitigated by items that were already put in place based on past discussions. So, Chief. Yeah, actually, thank you for that, that opportunity, because what I think there might be a misconception is that this incident produced this meeting. That's not at all, all true. We, we proactively meet not just with Six Flags, we meet with the apartment communities on Riverside Drive and in other regions of the county that either experience um, higher crime or that are very important to the community uh, and really all of our neighborhoods. But I'll say this, some people were asking when will these things be implemented? These things have been implemented. This is just another step as we refine our process. We've already given recommendations to Six Flags. Six Flags have given recommendations to us. We've included many partners. And so these things are, some, of, some are already implemented and some are in the midst of being implemented and refining. So it's not really like a black and white list. It's just community policing. And those efforts in this region have reduced crime pretty substantially. And I know that uh, Commissioner Sheffield made mention of that. But in this region, we have dropped crime over the last 10 years plus. Um, and it's a substantial drop here just from basic community policing that you hear about in the news all the time, where we're partnering with our, not only Six Flags, but with our apartment complexes and our businesses in this region. And we measure that. 
and we determine how we're doing. And so we're doing, we're doing well. We, we want to do better, but we're doing well. And so this is really just an, an ongoing proactive stance that the police department takes really as a, as a uh, habit, as a way of policing and, and engaging and building trust at the same time, if, if, if you will. So I think that's all. Um, I know that I've got some things going on, so I'm probably going to have to step out here in just a second. But. I, I, Chief, Chief Amthuser said it all. You know, we get so, we talk about the issues like uh, you did, ma'am, about the issues down here. But when we look at the data over the last 10 years, we've had about a 50% drop in total crimes down here per year. And so that's not the, the just because of the hard work of the law enforcement, but it's the partnership that we've had down here with the community and uh, the trust that we built down here in the communication. And um, I know prior to Mapleton becoming a city, I know that uh, Commissioner Sheffield, the commissioners uh, are, are all dedicated to their various districts and they're very supportive of public safety and, and thank God they have given us the tools that has been, that we need to, to do our job. But, but um, we're going in a good direction down here. We talk about the things implemented today like the chief said, they're already being implemented and today was a, just another uh, way to come together once again and to dissect what we have done and look at better ways of, of charting a pathway to the future. But I thank you and I appreciate everybody coming out and appreciate the community and just to add on, um, so you know from the sheriff's office perspective what we've done as well is move the new sub precinct down in this area as well to help combat some issues we have. Uh, not to supplement anybody, but more to um, back up the police department if they need it. And also provide another presence in the south side of the county, Six Flags Drive, Riverside, et cetera. So we are doing things as the chief stated and director stated and everyone stated here, already have plans to make this a safer and better area. And we all working together collaboratively to do that. And so by moving the sheriff office down this area, it's also helping to enhance that safe, safety as well. I just want to add, there was a question earlier with respect to what the county or what's being done right now. And I think I can share about our real-time crime center just a little bit uh, at police headquarters. So with the real-time crime center, they're able, our police officers are able to capture uh, incidences almost at the moment that it occurs. In fact, on the night in question at Six Flags Park, the cameras from a neighboring hotel picked up activity from a young man that had a gun on him, and that was quickly dispatched to the police at the park, and they were able to apprehend him. So that's one of the things, I think it was a question from Fox 5, that's one of the immediate things that, that we have available right now as a resource that we can share. Thank you for that, Commissioner. Um, and that, that was, I kind of alluded to it, but you're exactly right when I said that there were other things that, that took place um, that wasn't readily available or made, made available. But actively, you know, I, I think we, we sometimes hone in on the one or two events that, that happen that get a lot of attention, but, um, but the, the tireless work that our, that our public safety officers and law enforcement officers do where, you know, it's their job to catch people every single time um, repetitively to ensure that you don't get news stories. So, um, you know, I want to take a, a quick moment just to thank, you know, the police chief, director, register, our sheriff's department for the hard work, the courageous work that you do every day. Um, it, it's tough coming out facing, um, you know, what, what could be life and death scenarios and, and their officers do that every single day. So uh, I do want to take a moment to applaud them for the, for the courageous work and tireless work that they do when they may not get the recognition uh, that they do deserve. So with that being said, is there any more questions? All right, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out today. Again, um, this is uh, one of many conversations that we will continue to have. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you all for coming. This city, this county, this area um, will continue to do well. We'll continue to show a renewed com commitment to partnership. And, uh, and that will take us, I'm, I'm absolutely certain, into a much better place in the future. So thank you all again. Thank you all for coming. Have a good day.